the phones now where uh, Fire Chief Dan Stone is standing by. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Sabrina and Chris. How are you doing? Good morning. We're doing pretty good. Just wanted to catch up. Uh, I guess, first of all, how has the Guam Fire Department's operations uh, expanded uh, with the declaration of PCOR 2? Are you guys now doing things that you weren't doing in PCOR 1? Uh, well, so actually, uh, the Guam Fire Department, uh, as far as business as usual for us, if there's such a thing anymore, uh, has been, for the most part, in place. Uh, the only thing that we're probably going to be expanding to here shortly is um, our Fire Prevention Bureau going into the permitting center uh, over at the Business Licensing and Permitting Center uh, to start receiving um, uh, from permit requests to uh, drawings and occupancy permit requests. Uh, so that line of business will start uh, coming online here very shortly. Um, other than that, uh, the Guam Fire Department has never really closed during this whole pandemic, and uh, we're, we're ready and uh, maintaining and holding the line. Mm -hmm. What about your COVID uh, transport unit? Is that, is that still fully operational? Are you going to keep that in place for until, I don't know, Yeah, the vaccine thanks for the found? question, Serena. Yeah, you're, absolutely. <laughs> um, the, since standing up the COVID transport units, uh, we've, um, we've uh, handled a about 116 uh, patients with that uh, with those two units since March 15th. Um, so it's proven very uh, valuable uh, to our organization as far as our op operations are concerned, mm -hmm. um, because we were able to reduce the amount of potential exposures of our personnel from the 200 plus that we have down to the 12 um, 12 firefighters that are assigned that you know that volunteered for this particular duty. Mm -hmm. How has this whole entire COVID? Uh response affected uh, the Guam Fire Department in terms of uh, have you seen people that you know have resigned or quit or anything like that because of Ab uh, yeah absolutely not Sabrina you okay. you'll find that the the Guam firefighters uh, and our all of our personnel in the Guam Fire Department are very committed to this uh, fight against the, the COVID-19 um, and you know we're we're not uh, we're not uh, any strangers to any kind of crisis, whether it be natural or, uh, you know, an auto accident or uh, even a, a bug that we can't see. Mm -hmm. What about any of them, if they've been activated, like for the National Guard, are you experiencing a shortage in staff? No, so actually we have not, and, you know, and I, and I really do uh, want to say thank you to, uh, to the TAG, uh, General Esther Agigi, for that. Um, I think she paid special attention to uh, the, you know, that uh, that possibility of if she was to be able to call up her, her guard members, uh, that some of her guard members are also the first liners uh, or front liners as well. And if she if she calls them up, she takes from our ability to uh, continue the mission and operate. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been very good, and she's uh, she's been very considerate about that. What about testing? Have you guys uh, have your firefighters uh, been tested? I know that uh, that was supposed to be part of the uh, next expanded level of, of phase of testing. So funny, it's funny you bring that up because as we speak, uh, we have some of our personnel uh, up at the central uh, public health facility uh, awaiting if they, they've probably be already been tested um, or to had their swabs taken. Um, if they're not done, they're probably almost done uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. And we are scheduling them throughout the week uh, going into next oh, week wow. in coordination with public health mm -hmm. uh, for, for those who want to volunteer to take this swab. Oh, so it's on a volunteer basis. Yes. And, okay. Yes. And how many? I can't, force, I can't force anybody to take the test. Right. How many have been tested so far? Uh, so we we initially or early on we had a few of our people, uh, our personnel that uh, uh, were tested uh, with potential exposures that came back negative, uh, both with the patient that they handled as well as the testing uh, that the firefighter uh, underwent. Um, to uh, answer the question about how many have we tested so far, we actually have. Uh, I believe 13 firefighters up there right now. So the effort with public health is to start testing those frontliners uh, from Guam Fire Department, Guam Police Department, and to our medical uh, support, st the medical staff as well. Nice, Chief. Uh, while we're on the subject of uh, frontliners, what are uh, your your rank and files? What are they saying about this uh, double pay issue? Because I know that you guys have uh, had firefighters in the department for a long time. They've worked other emergencies. They've gotten the double pay. Um, so how are you managing these grumblings that we're, we're hearing about on our end? Well, you know, I, in, you know, I totally appreciate the, the fact that our firefighters, um, you know, they raised the question, you know, they pose the same questions that I'm sure all uh, other employee, essential uh, employees have raised as well. 
Um, and we've tried to answer to the best of our ability. Uh, you know, I seek out the guidance from uh, DOA as well. Um, and then we follow, you know, the follow the governor's guidance as, uh, as well. Um, and as we go out and explain that to our personnel, um, sure, you know, there's, there's going to be those that, are, uh, that still have the grumblings and, um, and uh, aren't quite satisfied with the answer. However, you will find a large percentage of our firefighters understand that right now, uh, we're in the fight, and, and so the focus is going to maintain, uh, be focused on uh, winning this fight against the COVID-19. So are you satisfied? Satisfied with what, Sabrina? Well, you said that uh, the majority of the firefighters are, are satisfied that we're still, you know, we're that in this they're fight. Getting the, yeah. They're not getting double. What are they getting, like, 25%? Correct. So they, uh, so as far as I've, uh, I'm, I'm aware, um, we, you know, we've been paying them. Uh, we're paying them the 25% uh, differential pay. Um, and that came out this past weekend. Um, however, I, you know, was brought to my attention that uh, some of my personnel didn't get all of their pay, and we immediately, uh, once that was uh, brought to my attention, we've addressed it, and we're working to resolve that. Um, but other than that, uh, again, you know, uh, our firefighters are in, committed to this fight and committed to the community and making sure that we provide the, the best uh, possible service we can provide. Yeah, and I, I could, you know, and talking to, I mean, who doesn't know a bunch of firefighters? What we're hearing yeah. on our end is, is they're, they're committed, like you said, but they're <coughs> very disappointed, uh, hurt, and angry that they're not seeing the same commitment from the administration. So I know that's got to put you in a tough spot. I mean, you came over from the federal side, so I don't know if you guys had the double pay over there. But, I mean, again, it's got to be awkward for you, Chief, because uh, 25% is not double pay. Understood. But, uh, you know, right now uh, we're working with what we can. And, um, you know, the governor and the lieutenant governor absolutely recognize the fact that um, we have to, that they wanted to uh, recognize the, the work and the efforts and the commitment by the firefighters and the rest of the government uh, that is uh, uh, on the front lines. And so... Uh, they came up with the, uh, the the differential pay, and for right now, it's it's the, it's the acknowledgement of their work. Um, and so, again, like I've said, for the most part, um, throughout the rank and file, from what I've been getting back uh, from either first you know firsthand discussions with them and or feedback from their commanders um, and their assistant chiefs, um, uh, again, they're they're very committed. Um, you know, their their focus right now is on uh, on taking care of the business at hand. So they don't they don't want the double pay. That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Chief, that's a tough one, man. Feel for you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Anything you, else, Bree? Do you feel they should get the double pay? Aside from what you know, whatever the governor, the governor says, says or the I mean, governor yeah. Says, do you feel that they should get the double pay? Well, if the rules and, and regulations permit it, then of course. Uh, that's uh, that's what uh, they should be getting. But um, uh, based on the reviews and the discussions with DOA, and, and they've done the deep dive into the into the rules and regulations. Uh, and you know, I have to trust that the decisions and the logic that they've used to apply these rules and regulations is in line with uh, what we are able to do as the government. Was that a yes or a no? It was. I follow the rules uh, as they're outlined in the, in the Department of uh, Administration rules and regulations as well as my guidance from the administration. Okay, yeah, that wasn't an answer, but uh, I guess since you, you're not going to answer that question with a yes or a no, what, what is your message to uh, the firefighters that are well, hoping that they'll get their double pay? Well, we will continue to work with the administration. You know, the governor, the lieutenant governor, are, you know, they've got a lot of things that they're, uh, that the, they're making decisions on, and this is this is something that they're, you know, they've uh, been uh, discussing uh, and looking for the guidance and getting all the and getting all the subject matter experts to, to chime in and provide their feedback. And based on all of that information, uh, the decision was uh, that the double pay was not something that they were going to be able to pay out. Uh, and an acknowledgement of all the efforts that are going on, uh, they came up with the differential pay uh, as that acknowledgement. I feel like a lot of firefighters are yelling at the radio right now. That could that could be uh, that could be Chris. <laughs> if, if, you, if it were up to you, though, Chief, would if you pay? It was up to it? you. If I had if I had that kind of money in my pocket right now, I'd pay everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You good? Uh, anything else you want to add, Chief? 
No, I just I just want to say uh, to all the firefighters and all of our first, our frontliners that you know uh, keep up the great work. You know, it's been it's been amazing the coordination and the efforts and the commitment that uh, each one of our frontliners have uh, been putting on out there. Uh, more directly to the Guam Fire Department, uh, keep up the great work. Extremely proud of the efforts that are going on, the professionalism, and of course the commitment that they uh, that they've been uh, their, their commitment to winning this fight. Okay, Chief. All right. Thanks. Appreciate Chief. it. Wash your hands. Thanks a lot. You too. Okay, okay. Chief. Bye. Uh, some of the comments here. Chris and Bree, remember, he was appointed by the governor. Yeah, we know. Um, Glenn writes, GPD and GFD are not going to get their double pay. That's just, I mean, you would uh, want your chief to go to bat for the guys. That's what, that's what every person who's a soldier in an organization, whether it's KUAM, the Guam Fire Department, the office of the governor, well, they're going to bat for their guys hardcore. They're giving them 15% differential pay. They're catering for the cabinet. So they're taken care of. On the, they're committed to taking care of these directors and these deputy directors and these cabinet members. But the commitment to take care of the nurses, the doctors, the firemen, the policemen, the frontliners who kept us safe and helped us get to where we are today with this reopening. Yeah, they're not feeling the commitment so much. They're not getting treated the same as these political hires. I mean, we are rolling out the gold carpet. It's not even a red carpet anymore, Sabrina. It's a gold carpet. And I feel for Bree because this is just, I mean, who boy. It's tough to deal with just a constant barrage of nonsense. It's just nonsense and an avalanche. Even when you get the stuff from the foyer, you're reading it like, what the hell is this? What is this? I've I don't been want it anymore. a whole lot today. Just, I, I can't yeah, believe. But you know what? They're not going to break us. <laughs> <laughs> We're already broken. Ay, Nako. Ay, Nako. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, to put the chief on the line and he won't even say that his guys deserve the double pay, that's crazy. That's the definition of a yes man. And when I said I felt like all the firemen were yelling at the radio, you know they were. You can't tell me these firemen are like, oh, yeah, no, we're good with 25%, chief. Ah, just munga, 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 never mind. Well, go give it to the directors and the deputy directors. <laughs> we're committed in this fight. <laughs> Go, no, no, no. Munga, munga, chief. It's all right, yeah. Why don't we get to get in trouble? I mean, really, you if I'm a firefighter or a policeman... You might want to get those posters ready, get some markers or something, and stand over there with the nurses. I mean, is that really what he said? He said, sure, there were some grumbling still, but... Um, a majority. He, a majority of the firefighters are good with it. All right, so if you guys know any firefighters or any frontliners who are good with it, just throw it in the comments or, you know, shoot us a message or whatever. Uh, I wanted to... <laughs> Man. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, the guy called in, you know? Yeah. I mean, he knows Thanks. what's going to happen, so... Um, thank you. Where's the wand? <laughs> Where I'm gonna is bring, the wand? I'm going to bring my wand tomorrow, okay? I'm going to bring my wand tomorrow. No, we're going to bring it tomorrow. I, I got this message on my Facebook, and, you know, we're talking... We talked to DOA... Uh, Ed Byrne about paying the nurses, the doctors. Obviously, we're hound, we're hounding on this double pay issue. Um, but this message I got, calling out the Department of Labor. If there are mandates for the specific compensation for nurses, doctors, and frontliners, and it is not being complied with, why is Department of Labor wage an hour not doing their job? And that clearly there is a violation with the FLSA Title 22 GCA. Oh, they know their stuff here. <laughs> yep. Mm hmm. It's a labor lawyer right here. Fair Labor Standards Act. Right. Technically, DOL should be redressing these employees with this matter, with or without an official complaint having to be filed. In that, again, there's an apparent violation. Could it be perhaps that the main labor law enforcement specialist three was political accommodated when this administration came in? Uh, with her not having any experience as an investigator. Uh, anyway, I'll jump along here. I'm really curious why Department of Labor is not doing their job to enforce compensation. Because the Department of Labor director is working on PUA, and the deputy director of the Department of Labor is working over at the quarantine facility. Okay, so can you just okay. understand that they're, you know, I mean, unemployment, FPUC, PUA, yeah, that's legit. But this deputy director, I mean, he can't, 
fight for you nurses because he's getting catered meals. I'm sorry. He's one of the cabinet that's very fortunate to be wined and dined. Or at least dined. We don't know if there's any wine. <laughs> I want to be responsible with my comments. But they're getting dined three times a day. Jason? Being okay. paid for with your hard-earned, tax-paying dollars. Okay, I have a question for you. If if this has come up, because certainly... You're not answering questions. Certainly, well, certainly in the four hours that we do this show, we cover...